All right, so I got the rear end done. I got motor mocked up. Steering. What can I do about steering? Hmm. Um. Well, I have this plate. Let's see here. If I folded that in half and welded it, made it an angle, that might work. Let me get a hammer. This is going to take forever. I wish there was a faster way to do this. That'll work. Well, that's way faster. Alright guys, what's up? We're back on the golf cart build again. We're moving right along with this thing. We got the rear end hooked up last time. Front end hooked up the first time. I got the motor sitting in there and tacked in place. Just mocked up to look at. I did put the steering, arm on, steering arms on. I just haven't hooked them up yet. As you've seen in the intro, I made a... Basically a makeshift drop bracket. That's off center because of the way the bolt holes are. And yeah, it's good and sturdy. I bent that piece of metal, just tacked it in a few spots. Nothing pretty, nothing fancy. Just getting the job done. So we're going to be mounting that up underneath there, hooking the steering arms up to it. I'm going to loosen the steering arms, show you how to adjust them. And what we'll do is we'll leave them. We'll just you tighten your set screw so it doesn't move. We'll leave them loose until we get this thing rolling. That way I can do any adjustments that are needed, put the final tightening on them, they're ready to go. I do have to tighten these two bolts. I was going to run a bar back from here up to here. Problem I'm having is where the steering arms are going to sit. So that may be put off. Good thing is I use thick steel, so that's not going to bend either way. I still need to brace the middle of them. But for now, we're going to leave it like that unless I have any issues with it. So we're going to go ahead and get these bolts tightened down. Get this put in place, and I'm going to show you how to hook it all up and where it sits and how to adjust these the best we need to. And then we're going to move on to something else. Probably getting the motor finished welding in, which I'll show you. I got it just tacked on the sides. And I'm going to finish throwing a bead on there because it is set and centered. We're going to start grinding on that shaft because that shaft is a, it's like a beveled shaft. It starts off and goes smaller. Put a three-quarter inch collar on that with a sprocket. And hopefully I can get, maybe get a chain on there today or soon. Or at least run me a rope so I can get it all lined up. Tighten down the best we need to and then we'll be ready, hopefully, within the end of this week to fire this thing up and get a test ride. Alright, so basically what we're going to do is bolt this on. Just get it mocked up for now and then we'll tighten it all later. Maybe if I can get the bolt in the hole. There we go. Alright. Got one bolt in. Second bolt in. Get this started. like that it's all it's setting in like I said it's not tight yet got plenty of movement but that's good I'll get these steering arms wiggled up in there and they will just slide hopefully right in these holes at least I hope that's what's gonna happen there we go love when the plan comes together so let me get down there and I'll show you how to adjust them out and then we'll work on getting them squared up as we can Alright, so basically we got the steering arm here. It's still tight. 
the easiest way to do it but you uh, I loosen this end already hold on this end there's a little spot right here you can hold on to and you just want to twist this get it unloosened usually it just takes one little twist and it's ready to go then and what I do is I back these out about that far that way there's still plenty of thread catching and then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll get this hooked up the other side hooked up and then I'll show you what you do to back these off to put them pretty close to end spot alright so we got it all bolted up everything's tight now there's no play in it at all you move this everything moves solid move the steering wheel and everything moves now I do it my way I'm not sure if this is the right way but it's the way I know what I do is I line this up the best I can based on the direction of the buggy which would be about right there kinda eyeball it and yeah, that looks a little bit off and right about there looks pretty good to me looks pretty straight and what we do is we come over this side and look at this side looks like it's setting a little bit out so the best way to do it is because it's setting a little out you put your wrench right here and you twist it to where it's tightening and what it'll do is it'll bring that thing to the straight position and then it's kind of just tedious you just go back and forth and check it see now I think we went a little too far in I need to come out just a little now if it's loose like this one is you can just back it out with your hand well that's pretty close I would say that's that's really close actually so now come back over here and check this side looks like this side is turned just a little straighten it back up it's pretty straight this side's out just a little. So, and there we go. Now that's not 100%, but that's a good starting point. Now what we'll do is we'll tighten these bolts, or these nuts, excuse me. You'll hold here, you'll tighten this nut up tight on both sides. And that'll keep that from moving. Then once I get it back under its own pressure, I put these tires back on which I need to try to get a little bit of air in we'll set it back down a couple ways to do it you can run a string but I have these out an inch so that's gonna be very hard to do but the way I'm gonna do it for now is I'm just gonna eyeball it once I get it sitting down and I get weight on it I'll probably have a couple people sit on it or put some weight up there to where it squats just a little I'll eyeball it all in We'll call it good for now once I start getting closer and closer to riding it or I actually test drive it then I can make any adjustments I need to wrench everything down good and tight and we'll be good to go so let me go ahead and tighten these nuts up on the end and then we'll call that good for now Let's go back to straight there we go that one's straight and hey that one's straight too straight enough straight as I left it now I'm glad that drop brackets working out now mind you this is no pressure on it so once I get tires on there that may be a whole different story for now we're gonna stick with it let's get that motor off there let's get some welding done Alright, so luckily we got everything in place already and tacked up. So, the hard part is done. Now we just gotta weld it in place. I'm using these because I broke my welding hammer like an idiot. So, 
Well, we're halfway there. All right, so got a good bead back there. Thick little tack here. This stuff's really thin, so but it ain't going nowhere at all. It's good and squared up. I like it. It does tilt back in a little angle, but that's fine. <clears throat> Drops everything down so I can put the muffler back on if I want to go with the stock muffler. Everything will fit perfectly, just like it's supposed to. So that's the idea behind this. And that being on that backwards pitch. Now let me get that piece off down there. And I got a lot of grinding to do back there. Alright guys, we're actually going to end this video here. I was going to use this three quarter inch and grind all that shaft down. But the more I got to looking at it, I would have to take a lot off of that shaft. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to go to Royal King. See what they have. See if they have maybe a 5 16 or even a 7 8 get a different collar this is the sprocket I want to use get a different collar that will just slide over it even if it's a little loose put a keyway in it tighten these set screws just to hook it up get it to where I can drive it around and see what it does that's where we're at I can't make it up there this week I'm just gonna order the part because I want to order a new clutch for this because these chains are 40 or 41 whichever ones they are these are 40 so a 41 that way I can have that thicker heavier chain I have plenty of o-ring chain that's what I want to run on here just in case I ever do take it in the mud I prefer the o-ring chain and that's the idea from now we're going to use this motor to test 7 horsepower Subaru engine runs great it's a governor bypass so it should have plenty of power that's where we're at next week we'll get it all hooked up and get the brakes somewhat hooked up I still got to figure that out and we'll go from there we're getting closer and closer to riding thank y'all for watching like and subscribe if you like these videos and we will see you next time